Prince Harry spent his life living in the shadow of his mother's tragic death. But when he falls in love, he realizes it's up to him to stop history from repeating itself. In our new series, Prince Harry, Windsor of Change, we'll tell you how a prince without direction became a duke who found a family. Listen to Even the Rich on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, hello, and welcome to Watch What Crappings, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Ye Old Bravs. I'm Ronnie, and that's Ben over there. Hello, Ben. How are you? Hi, Ronnie. Hi, how are you? Happy BravoCon Eve. Why, thank you. Happy happy night to you. It's so lovely to see you here on your show. <laughs> <laughs> happy Ben at home Eve. Yes, happy, <laughs> happy, you know, partying in L.A. Eve. Happy, <laughs> happy Ben hanging out at home Eve. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I, you should come. I'm telling you there's still a chance. I'm not there's coming. There's still a chance. I'm not so coming. you're saying there's a chance. I'm not coming. So you're saying there's a chance. There's no chance. Okay, so by the... I'm 100% not by coming. By the time this comes out, I'm making my an ass out of myself somewhere in Las Vegas. We're recording this a little bit before I go, so this won't come out till Friday, but um, hi, everybody. That's Let's hope I'm still hi. living, okay? And if I'm dead, this is going to be a really yeah. awkward intro. <laughs> And you know what? For people who are really confused, this the everything's gonna be kind of like. Well, actually, no. I don't know if I even have to give this disclaimer. I was gonna say, well, this is coming out before Beverly Hills, but actually, Beverly Hills. No, this is gonna come out before Beverly Hills this week. So, because of the travel and everything uh, being a little topsy turvy, we're releasing this episode first because we have a screener for this episode. So we're able to record this ahead of time. We did not have a screener for Beverly Hills, so unfortunately, that's gonna be later. But I'm gonna be recording that with the wonderful and hilarious Ray Sani, who. Um, She's been a, she's been on the show many times, and she is the best. So sorry you won't be there for Love that, the Ronnie. Ray Ray. But uh, we're gonna have we have a wonderful, wonderful fill in for you. So excited! Oh for yeah, that. right on. So thanks and for thank everyone you, for Ray. being patient. Yeah, thank you, Ray, and thanks for everyone being patient waiting for that Beverly Hills weekend. Yes, and thank you for your patience as well. You know, we love doing this. We love having you guys here, and the schedule's crazy. Bravo is crazy. They're overloading everybody with everything at all times. The audience, us, the everybody, mm. the casts of all the shows. And it stars. Uh, it stars. stars. Okay, it's a reality reckoning. It's a reality it's a reckoning, reality okay? reality reckoning. Tell Vanity Fair that one time I went to a restaurant on Real Housewives of New York and they made me wait for five minutes before I got to my table. It's abuse. It's Speaking abuse. Speaking of, if you want to hear our reality reckoning um, recap, basically we talk about the Vanity Fair article that came out that exposes Bravo for all of their misdeeds. Well, a couple of them. Um, and that's over on the feed now. And that's our crappy hour live from this <laughs> from this week. So go check that out. Also, um, the schedule's so crazy. We've got Miami that started up. That's a super fun two-parter. New York ended, but then Potomac is coming back. All this stuff is happening. Tons of shows. So we are not covering, for the moment, Below Deck Mediterranean, Winter House, and something else. And Married to Medicine. Right. Sorry. We just, we need to keep our sanity. So right now we're really on, we're doing Real Housewives and Southern Charm. That's, that is the plan for right now. It could all change, but right now that is the plan. If you want to complain, feel free to complain. I'm just going to say right now, I just may not read your complaints. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> oh, we complain enough for all of us. So there's Real Housewives of Potomac, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Real Housewives of Miami, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Southern Charm, and Dwell Hello next week, and then Crappy Hour, the live show. And mm -hmm. then, of course, our bonus episodes where we will touch on some of these shows we're not doing full recaps on, amongst other things. So there's plenty of stuff. Thanks for being here. If you want this on video, come watch us on video on Patreon. Okay, that's where our bonus episodes are. Our bonus episodes this week was super fun we played this game where we rank stuff we've done it a few <laughs> times and this time we ranked what do we rank important. disease phobias phobias not to phobias it was a really important um comprehensive episode <laughs> where we ranked phobias from most reasonable phobia to least reasonable phobia 
Um, we sort of did a top level survey of various phobias that we could find on the fly. And um, I think the results will be very fascinating for people. I loved our list. I loved the list and, as uh, well. And I would like to say that if there was a name for the phobia of watching Austin eat, um, that would have been the most reasonable phobia, hands down. Because what a terrifying fucking sight. And you know what? I would love to meet Wendy one day just so I can say, you know what, Wendy? You seem so cool on this show. I really love you. You're one of my favorite moms on Bravo. How did you not teach Austin to eat? What I mean, what the hell? Teach your teach your children yeah. to close their mouth. He doesn't even just eat with his mouth open. He literally pushes his tongue against his teeth with food. Like he, like, ah. we've we've said for years that Austin is like Fozzie Bear and he literally eats like a Muppet too, where basically the mouth opens and closes and crumbs fall out. And we're supposed to believe that something was Fozzie digested. Bear's more polite because Fozzie Bear doesn't have a tongue st- fucking pushing up against the food and then his teeth and then the air like Bleh. Bleh. do you yeah. hear that sound it's disgusting <laughs> it's a disgusting sound imagine that with noodles with with some shells some noodle they, shells i i do because there's a scene in this episode where like shep is squeezing velveta onto some shells and honestly you could not tell me if it was velveta squeezing out of a pouch or just austin chewing on a cracker <laughs> both sounded the same just saliva saliva lip smack yeah it's it's really bad previously on southern charm as livia chuckled both bow, both new bows and old bows yeah she's got some sign i'm loving uh madison's narrations at I the know. beginning of this previous previously on southern charm betas tried to bang olivia taylor was a slut and jt was short <laughs> thanks fucking moron betas a bunch of more and betas were sick and went to some sort of house that was supposed to be an event in space, but it just looked like a slut Thankfully, den. Thankfully, we added a short <laughs> simp to this cast just to go along with all the betas crying to his mommy in some event space nobody's ever going to rent out because it's crusty and smells. Go find it. Go rent it on air beta and beta. Verbeta. <laughs> Verbeta. And be sure to get your dinner from Beta Dash. Bring it right over. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go. My ubater is here. <laughs> so, uh, the poor thing can't find a girlfriend. He just masturbates all the time. Basically, says thank you until he climaxes into his palm, sadly, and then cries to his mama. <laughs> Beta. His mom is a beta too. And Taylor, and finally, um, Taylor tried to explain her slutty ways, but we weren't buying what she was selling. Just like nobody's going to buy a fucking day chaser. Is she still trying to make that happen? Good grief, girl. I'm married. Just like just like how people stopped buying betas when VCR came around. <laughs> We're not buying day chaser. As I like to call it, beta chaser. <laughs> Every time you walk into a pet smart, you'll see a wall of JTs and Austins. Just betas. Just sitting there in a the cup. <laughs> 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 betas and a cup a cup of betas <laughs> okay so um, uh, Patricia we see th- things happening in Charleston so Patricia has like some sort of antique armoire or a cabinet not a cabinet but it's like some sort of it's just a, a antique piece of furniture and she's futzing over it she's like wow these are supposed to be alternating this one's supposed to come up and that one's supposed to go back and this one's supposed to come up and that one's supposed to go back there randy is locked in see ya sucker (laughs) the only way randy will ever get out of the basement is if someone figures out how to move these figurines back into their proper order It's Patricia's version of Saw. She traps someone into a delicate antique. And it's not that they can't break out of it. It's just they know, like, I can't break out of it because this is worth (laughs) $100,000. They're just too terrified. (laughs) Um, Delicate wood. Delicate crumbling wood. They just are afraid of Patricia. So um, Craig is growing some stuff indoors. I don't know. I don't know what this is, but he's got all these like indoor plant lights and stuff like it's not weed. What do you think it is? What is it? Come on, you're green. Rutabetas. Um, they maybe it was like <laughs> just waiting for that one to, to hit you. Um, 
Um, you probably just growing cucumbers or something. It's just something Paige told me to grow something, so I grow it. I don't know. He's growing right. something that's gonna be dead soon. That's good. That, um, uh, you know what it is? The, Craig sees leaves. I see a billboard that says "Coming soon, Aphid City." <laughs> you know, like that's gonna be. That's just gonna be a pest I hate city, those right there. Those, those little flies. No, that's the fruit flies. The aphids are aphids are terrible. Aphids are the betas. Aphids are truly the betas of insects. They're these little things, and they crawl up, and they they basically like crawl up out of the dirt, and they they're on all the stems, and they just like suck the suck the living daylights out of these plants, and they actually leave like the sticky dew, and they're just like stupid and annoying. And here's how you know that they're betas. Because their primary predator is a ladybug. You got eaten by a ladybug? You're a beta. <laughs> I think I... No, I think I know what those are. They are like little flies, aren't they? Don't they fly? Well, they can sprout wings. Once they are done with the plant, they sprout wings and go to Okay, because I had so. all these plants. Remember when I was like, I need green in my house. So I got all these plants and I put them, you know, all yeah. over my house. And then they grew all these little tiny fly things because I don't know why, but they were everywhere. And I finally yeah. had to get rid of the plants. And me. the gays next door were like, what are you doing putting those plants out? And I was like, because I want someone to take them, but I'm not going to have them. And they were like, why? And I say, I told them the story. And they were like, we'll take them. And now every time I see them, I'm like, hope you're enjoying your fucking flies. Like, I didn't warn you. And also, they haven't invited me yeah. over lately. Those might be And I think that they're um, against me. But then I found out, oh. because I gave them all those flies. But then I looked it up, and it said that ladybugs will kill them. And so I ordered ladybugs on Amazon. Do you remember? I had all these ladybugs. You can order ladybugs. I had hundreds of ladybugs. Yeah. They were all it's, over my house. They were crawling all over me. They were they, everywhere. They multiply. My parents have ladybugs all over their house, and like, but you can't kill them because they're ladybugs. Yeah, I'm not you sort of kill feel, ladybugs. I'm like, I mean, like they're the only bug that comes like in a cute outfit. So you're like, oh, okay, fine. And they like, they're cute. They sort of like walk around, kind of just like looking. They're all looking for their friend Nancy. They're like, Nancy is Nancy. They really here? all are. They Nancy? they like mean no harm. Nancy? They're just like, oh, just passing through. Have you seen Nance? Nance? <laughs> have you seen? Hey, I was looking for Cynthia. <laughs> Cyn. <laughs> Sam, you told me to you told me to meet you on the CD the CD case. Do me case. a favor when you no? see when you see Nance, would you just tell her Brr, I'm not flying. I'm just gonna Brr, just so you know what I'm saying. Do you get it? I'm just gonna, no, they hey, do that. Hey, if you, hey, if you see Nance, tell her I'm at the Wingscott. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the baseboards. <laughs> yeah, I never killed the ladybug. I just fucking love those things. They're so sweet. Now, let me tell you they're this: so cute. they're terrible predators because I still had those little fucking bugs everywhere. So you know what, ladybugs. You also need to do a better job. If I found ladybug a ladybug <laughs> version of Wendy, I would say, Wendy, why did why did you teach your your children ladybugs to be such terrible predators? Okay, they need to do better, Wendy. Still believe in you, mothers. Don't let your ladybugs become predators. <laughs> Um. So anyway, uh, so Craig has future aphid uh, condominiums that he's growing, and then uh, we see Madison with Hudson. Hudson seems to have rebounded well after getting the shit beat out of him and bitten up like crazy last uh, week, and now he is. He's a resilient kid. He's not a beta. He's not a ladybug. It helped um, when I beheaded and, the mother uh, down the street of that child who hurt my child. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I threw her into a ravine, that certainly helped. Uh, I, I Cut off her hair bitch. and sold it to Gwen. I the bitch. Uh, the FBI is still over there questioning her. So Hudson's feeling just fine. <laughs> Hudson's got Hudson ha, has is going to ask a girl to be his girlfriend or his so Valentine. So Hudson, you got any so. girls yet? Please tell me Taylor hadn't sent any nudes. Everybody, hand over your iPhones. I'm checking. I'm checking for Taylors. <laughs> Hey, now we have Shep FaceTiming his mom. Gosh, mom, is it okay if I bring a bunch of guys up to Louisville to take them to the house? Like, ask, you know, also, can you ask dad about the outdoor grill? It's pretty self explanatory. Oh, one more thing, mom. Go fuck yourself. Let me do what I want to do in She's life. Like, uh, hopefully, one of your friends can work the grill. Thanks for nothing, Slore. <laughs> So then we go to JT's event space, which is a disaster. I guess, like, I guess he does not hire an, uh, a what the hell? staff. You hired a violinist so or whatever, a fiddle player or whatever the hell that guy was playing, and you can't hire someone to clean up? That is disgusting. I, I don't want to rent yeah. that place. Also, do you ever leave? What? Just, why is JT always <laughs> in this place? How are they not having the cast trip in the event space? Like, leave, JT. <laughs> I know. I smell you from here. He's like, guess what? <laughs> 
the, the event space has wheels. We're taking it to Linville. <laughs> So, yeah, they're cleaning up, and so Rod comes over, and he's like, JT, JT, the shambles of last night, am I right? And JT's like, oh, yeah, do you remember Remember what Craig did over there? He was trying to big dick energy me, standing, sitting on top of the cushions with his shoes on. With his shoes, my mother installed that, cush- that cushion. Well, guess what? He brought TPE, tiny pillow energy, get it? A few times I got to make jokes with the words oh, tiny. tiny pillow energy. I thought he was saying tiny polo energy. I'm so glad you said that because I was like, he's not even well, wearing a polo. And then I listened to it like three <laughs> times. I was like, what does this mean? But JT's always trying to make something happen. You know, this week it's TPE. Yeah. Um, bro code. Remember when he thought he invented bro code? No, professional, professional, professional right, conduct. Professional conduct. Thank you, because bro code was the thing. Professional conduct. So Rod's like, okay, well, I'm here to clean with you, I guess. And... um this is where we kind of enter the problem of this season. They've got a lot of like scandal going on, but they don't have a lot of charisma going on. They've got two guys who mm. are going to clean stuff boringly, and then their female leads are Taylor and Olivia, who are also pretty low on the energy scale, I would say. Um, but, you know, still enjoying it. <laughs> just pointing it out that I was like, wow, I would the editors are doing a good job of just editing a lot of things together. I would say this show has never really had too much charisma in terms of its cast. I mean, you're looking at Craig. Craig's, Craig, who talks like this for an entire season. <laughs> He's developed charisma. He de- it t- it's taken all these people years That's to get true. to where they are. So I just feel like Rod and JT, you know, they're just starting out. They're just like year one Southern Charm newbies trying to see what sort of charisma they can find under a pillow. Yeah. You know, and it's not American energy. Idol, you so. know, it's just like privileged white people. So, you know, I believe, yeah. I believe in you. Well, Rod's not, to be fair, Rod is not white. You're but, right. Um, I just mean it is in still general. Just privileged people. I just mean in general. In general, generally yeah. speaking. Over, yeah. The over, overall. <laughs> the, 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 arc, the general overall. arc of the show. <laughs> the definitely, def, oh, the, Anyway, ladybugs, am I right? You know what's funny about ladybugs? <laughs> they have so much charisma. <laughs> so, um, anyway, Rod was saying he was disappointed because he was really hoping that Olivia's first meal back to quote unquote normalcy, it was not going to be like World War Three. Like, what sort of meal at JT's mama's event space is with a guy on like electric fiddle is going to be anything close to normal. You're on a TV show. There's no such thing as normalcy. Did you not read the Vanity Fair article? Mm-hmm. And so JT is saying, you know, uh, Taylor just feels so alienated. She's just doing, you know, she's just got BSE, bad sweater energy. She just can't stop knitting terrible sweaters. <laughs> she's just so sad. And then we see a clip of him on the phone with her being like, please don't be sad. You can marry me. And she's like, um, no thanks. I just wish anybody would like me. I like you. You don't count anybody else. (laughs) But I'm so sorry for you. Last night was brutal. I know everyone's against me. There's not one single person who seems to be in my corner who even likes me. But it's me. I'm here. I just wish. I wish there was someone. Just anyone. I just wish I knew someone that, I don't know, had some kind of a rental space or something that maybe I could throw a party. <laughs> I've got a rental space. <laughs> hmm. It's like, I'm everything you want. I'm everything you need. I'm everything inside of you that you wish you could be. She's like, uh, 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 uh. Is that a busy signal? <laughs> Sorry, was was I doing that out loud? <laughs> like, I knew I shouldn't have sung Vertical Horizon. <laughs> so we cut back and Rod's like, okay now, but come on now. Taylor's been caught in, in what, three lies now? And JT's like, yeah, but I got a soft spot for him. And she's young, she's petite, she's blonde, and she's as white as the inside of mommy's dinner rolls. Right? <laughs> People can make this. I also have... <laughs> I also have a literal soft spot for her, the cushion that Craig tried to soil with his shoes. <laughs> and uh, this was uh, a kind of the controversy last week, I think, with us and our discussion was kind of this, um, you know, that people like Taylor do was always it? get oh, away yeah. with everything and that Madison had a point and Leva had a point. 
I don't disagree. I do think that they're infantilizing Taylor. And I do see that thing. I mean, I am from Texas. Okay. I do know. I've talked many times about the power of the blonde here in Texas. You know, that's a real thing. So I see that. My point was, I just don't like the slut shaming coming from the women. I think if it was a one or the men, obviously the men, but I don't, I just don't like it. That's all. You know what though? We just, we can't police. We can't, we as men can't police women, and if the women are going to slut shame the other women, well, it's not policing. I'm just saying I don't like it. Okay, I'm not pulling anybody <laughs> over. It just bugs me. I don't like to see people getting slut shamed, and I don't think it was right that Madison was ever slut shamed by this crew either. You know, it's, it's bullshit. So yeah. um, that's all. I don't know why why I'm going to that, but I just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're in the spirit. It's okay. Um, so JT, well, to the, to this end, JT says, well, people can make bad decisions. Doesn't make them bad people. I know that. When I was going through the pain of divorce, there were a few years where I was not easy to be around. Uh, not because my personality. I just had this weird thing where I hated deodorant because it sounded like divorce in a little bit. So I was just difficult to be around. But I can look at Taylor and say, are you not trustworthy? Or are you just going through pain? Or do you just really like those kind of chunky knit turtleneck sweaters? Because, I mean, I need to know what's going on I here. don't think he's saying that at all. I think he's, like, shopping. And he's one of those people who's going shopping around and is looking above his budget and looking for something with a scuff mark so he can take it up to the front desk and say this has a scuff mark on it. I think that everybody is acting like this is a big stain on Taylor. And so now he's saying, like, oh, well, now you're finally not too good for me. And then when she consistently tells him no... He's going to be like one of those guys at a crosswalk in New York. He's like, hey, baby, you're so hot. And then they're finally like, fuck off. And he's like, you're fat anyway. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Today, hip hop dominates pop culture, but it wasn't always like that. And to tell the story of how that changed, I want to take you back to a very special year in rap. 88, it was too much good music. The world was on fire. fire. Yeah. I'm Will Smith. This is Class of 88, my new podcast about the moments, albums, and artists that inspired a sonic revolution and secured 1988 as one of hip hop's most important years. We'll talk to the people who were there. And most of all, we'll bring you some amazing stories. You know what my biggest memory from that tour is? It was your birthday. Yes, and you brought me to Sade. Life-size <laughs> cardboard cutout. This is Class of 88, the story of a year that changed hip-hop. Listen to Class of 88 wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge the entire series right now on the Amazon Music app or Audible. That's my prediction. <laughs> I think, I think JT, uh, he is like obsessing over Taylor, but I think actually the woman for JT is Naomi because you know JT would be like, "Hey Naomi, I put down a cushion for you to sit on." <laughs> Shut up, JT. <laughs> oh yeah, that was so good. <laughs> He'll just like get off on Naomi rolling her eyes. Naomi is not going to settle for an Naomi. event space. No. I will tell you that right now. She's not going to settle for that event space <laughs> with mommy and his terrible couches. She's not going to do it. She's like, I'll hold space for people, but I'm not going to marry space. <laughs> so um, let's see. So Rod's like, yeah, you know, well, I can tell you this much. Um, Olivia is only going to be friends with Taylor again if Taylor is honest to a T. What are you two talking about whether two girls are going to be friends or not? Get a life. Go, sweep, go, go finish sweeping the floor. Meanwhile, I mean, this is what's frustrating is that like, oh, so Taylor, I mean, it's bad. Taylor lied three times. Taylor told big, bad lies. Like she definitely fucked up that relationship. But Austin can lie honestly a million times and Olivia will still maintain a friendship with him, which is the fucked up thing with this show with the guys. And that is something that happened, gets discussed sort of later. But Olivia's keeping Taylor at arm's length. And if a new story comes out, if we find out that if Taylor and Austin had sex, that's going to be the end for Olivia and Taylor, America's favorite two friends they just sort of learned about. Thelma and Louise, kind of. The new Thelma and Louise, kind of. The new Lucy and Ethel. Um, I think Olivia's been pretty Mary good to Taylor. Sandra. I mean, she stuck up for her against everybody last week. Um, yeah. I think she's, she's pretty good to Taylor. Um, she's not like 
the rest of these guys. So then we go to Austin meeting Olivia for a coffee on the side of the road because it's an Austin date. So what really do you expect? Austin's just like, give me a coffee and I'll show up half an hour late on the shoulder of the road. Right. Yeah, where are they? Like, where do they find this like little IKEA outdoor set <laughs> that they just sat down on, next to like a mile marker on a highway? <laughs> um, this random ass really place. Did. So she's like, "Wow, I forgot that it takes you longer to get ready than it even takes me." <laughs> Which is funny because we're both wearing athleisure. So Austin's like, yeah, well, thanks for meeting up with me today by the side of this highway. Um, I feel like I didn't really get to uh, talk to you last night because, like, last night threw me for a loop. I was thrown for a loop. Yeah, I don't really so know is like, what Taylor thinks she's doing, sending news to Whitney like that. But she did it, and I was mm-hmm. like, what? Why? I mean, sending that to Whitney of all people, of all people, Whitney. I mean, seriously, that is quite literally the last person to send it to. Did you get one? Did you get a nudie? Did you get a Taylor nudie too? Like in that whole spin out thing she's doing, because she's spinning out right now. Did you get one of those too? Oh, that mouth. Uh, No. (laughs) No, I never did. Can't you see him? See it? See it? <laughs> and he looks like he's totally 100% no. lying. There's a very long pause before he says, <laughs> No, I did not. And he looks out to the side and no. literally is doing what Ben is doing, sticking his tongue out. I mean, Austin is the worst liar. <laughs> he should not stick that tongue out on the side of the road. Cars are going to think it's an exit ramp, but they're just going to be like, Oh, here I go. And they're just going to drive up into his <laughs> they're mouth. They're going to think so his big. face is hitchhiking. <laughs> so this guy is the worst he's liar t- <laughs> i mean it just goes to show you that practice doesn't make perfect i mean he is terrible so yeah. he's like never 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 got a new from taylor that's insane that's insane right so speaking of did you talk to taylor after you know after she sent me that dude <laughs> and olivia's like yeah because i she was there for me so i'm like not going to turn anybody away who's like you know, I'm going to, like, take whoever's at my door and be happy. I'm like an emotional version of JT's penis. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't talked to you for 20 minutes. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know that, like, somewhere, Lisa Barlow's like, Jack, don't go to Columbia. Go to Charleston. Someone's at a door wants to talk to you. <laughs> so, like, um, finally Olivia... they found their mark. Someone who will always open the door. <laughs> Jack. She just has a stack of encyclopedias and Mormon brochures. Like the whole the whole supporting <laughs> cast of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City just got on a bus hearing that. <laughs> so um then Olivia is talking about how Austin really stepped up after the funeral. Um and then they like hugged and sat in the driveway for a long time. So I guess like um places where vehicles are is like their thing now. And so uh she was really comforted by the fact that Austin knows the pain of losing a sibling. And he says, uh by the way, um it did come to my attention when talking to my therapist uh that maybe um uh I don't make it quite literally clear to certain people in my life just how quite literally important uh they are to me and um the talk that you and I had at least Lisa and Caleb's remember when you said do not talk to me about being a friend yeah quite literally um it just made me feel like you thought I didn't care about our relationship oh. and it's not that yeah yeah no it's not that it's not that I don't care about our relationship. It's just I want to use you for sex, but not be committed to you. So that's really all I that know, was. I know, exactly. Like, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I was... I'm, I'm, I don't know how you got the impression I didn't really want to be there for you after I led you on until the camera stopped and then completely ghosted you and started making out with Shep's ex-girlfriend, who's your best friend. So, I don't know, so weird that you would get the impression <laughs> that I, I don't respect you. God. I really need to learn to communicate better. God, thank God for therapists. Am I right? Yeah. We're going to make out now, right? I'm going to therapy. Yeah, thank God. Thank God for Dr. Fraser Crane. I had to realize how important you are to my storyline. I mean, my life. My life. My life. One of the funny things so, about the Vanity Fair article that we didn't mention was, and I learned this from that show, I forgot the name of it, on Lifetime about the filming of The Bachelor, like the fictionalized version. What's um, it called? Yeah. Scripted? Um, What's it called? Uh, no, un- Unreal. Unreal. Yeah, I love that show, by the way. Unreal. You wouldn't know yeah. from my butchering of the title, but that's a great show. Watch it. But anyway, we learned from that show that they have to have like a mental pers- uh, mental health professional on set at all times, and they're like 
totally just in their trailer smoking or whatever, not paying attention. And the one from Bravo, at least for the housewives, is some guy from a website called realityshrinks.net. I can't. So yeah. I feel like I don't want to. It's like Dr. Nick from The Sim- Simpsons. <laughs> hey, everybody. You got a problem? Oh. <laughs> So I just think of that when Austin's like, look, I'm going to therapy. It's insane right now. It's insane. Realityshrinks.net. Try it. Bing. <laughs> so Olivia says, I just, I want, I want to trust you and get back there, you know, but I just don't know how there's, there's a mental blockage, which I feel like mental blockage really, that could have just been Austin's senior superlative, you know, like there's most likely to succeed funniest person and then austin just mental blockage (laughs) he's just a mental blockage he's like uh, take a mental what do you take when you can't poop he needs mental malox he's like a mental yeah he's a mental laxative um he'll just make you mentally shit yourself austin just keep staying with austin also (laughs) just like to point out you're not you're no longer dating austin you don't have to trust him anymore you know what i mean i don't like hearing that kind of language from olivia like I just don't know if I can trust you because that leads me to believe that she's working on something with Austin and I don't know Olivia that well yet on the show, but I can tell you this much. She's way too good for that fucker. So please move along. She is. And, and he says like, he understands that like, you know, that she doesn't trust him, but I'm going to try to take the mature approach and like let her work out these feelings and be able to, so that way we can continue being friends. And I'm going to push through her ice wall. If it fucking kills me i'm like please cut to the scene from uh from christmas story with a kid putting his tongue on the on the, on the frozen bowl because that's how austin's gonna get through an ice wall. Oh, my tongue is stuck my tongue is stuck austin wouldn't even have I'm to do it on I'm purpose stuck. all I'm he has to do wall. is pass a frozen pole and that could happen he could just be like <laughs> bah, 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 bah. I'm not cool. that, that. <laughs> my tongue stuck to that ball <laughs> Austin is going to be the worst White Walker in Game of Thrones. He's going to get to the big ice wall and be like, this is insane right now. There's an ice wall. Stupid. I'm not going to do this anymore. Austin is like a Skipping walking up Christmas story. I mean, mom, I'm dating Austin. Watch out, honey. He'll poke your eye out with that thing. <laughs> I know. He doesn't have a gun, mother. And that's sl- his tongue. Yeah, and that slide that the kid goes down is just Austin's tongue. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just Santa kicking a kid down Austin's tongue. Instead of the sexy leg lamp, it's just like a tongue, like on the table with like a big, a big stupid Fozzie bear on with top. a trop hop. It's a like, it's a trop hop can on top. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, Austin's like, so this goes back to my reason for calling you. Uh, you keep saying uh, you want a proper line of communication that hasn't happened. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So Olivia's like. Um, she's like, well, she starts talking about Taylor and she said that she's not talking to Taylor um, about Austin anytime soon. And she was like, because she was telling me that you love me and that we should give it a true, genuine chance. And that's just like, that's like fucked up. He's like, I mean, my interrupting. I mean, what? It's fucked up what? No, I was just going to say that's more fucked up than like getting a personality. (laughs) That'd be really hard. (laughs) Okay, I can't do that. (laughs) It's hard. Do you have any kind of sweater that would represent how fucked up that is? Um, so she's like, yeah. Um, I, he says, yeah, that was fucked up. And I do love you. And I hurt you. And I know we're supposed to be in each other's life. I just know it over you. I just know it. And she's like, well, I want to lean into that, but I'm in a funk. Like, it would be nice to be around each other and not daydream about how to murder you. I was like, oh, really? Listen, that's only going to get more intense the more you know Austin. Oh my God, could you imagine marrying Austin? Jesus. I honestly cannot. It seems like one of the worst decisions a human could make. So uh, Austin's like, he's like, well, I'm going to continue to text you things like movie quotes and things like that. Are you not entertained? It's Gladiator. <laughs> you remember, it's a movie. He's like, hold on, I'm just going to text you a quote. With my ass cheeks. This is Jim Carrey. This is a Jim Carrey movie. It was me. It was me. Jim Carrey, liar, liar. <laughs> Just Jim Carrey and everything. I don't even know Jim, yeah, more Jim Carrey good. quotes. God, I'm proud of myself, actually. I feel this is the most intelligent I've felt in a long time. <laughs> hey, Olivia, Olivia, you shall not pass. <laughs> 
It's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> With Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Starring Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Jim, Jim, Jim Carrey. <laughs> And she's like, well, I appreciate the direct line of communication that we've got going on here. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. It's from the notebook. So we then go to uh, Shep and Craig at an out. I'm sorry, little Craig at an outdoor bar. And Whitney meets up and Whitney's like, oh, hello, non mother. It's sunny out. I thought it'd be a little colder. Sort of hoping it would be. And Shep is like, oh, gosh. Okay, well, let's just start this off. So, uh, Whitney, you should have told me about the nude photo of uh, f- from that night with Taylor. I mean, you showed it to everyone else and not me. That's cool. I wanted to see your titties one more time. Gosh. Like, oh, look, man. I mean, look. It, 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 it was a joke. Okay. I, I wasn't trying to conceal him. It was just like, uh, whatever. It was hilarious. And Shep's like, yeah, I've known, I've known him a long time. I just wish he told me. This sucks. And he goes, and just so you know, I, I deleted it. I mean, it's already in Mother's Eye Cloud, so. <laughs> that was really the only goal. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we printed out a copy and uh, put it in the cupboard with Randy. <laughs> Neither of them getting out ever, anytime it's, soon. Uh, oh, it's a Mother's oh, Christmas oh. card for the year, so that's going to be. <laughs> going out to everybody anyway so yeah i deleted it shep is like was it dark she said it was dark and grainy oh no it was sent on a dark and rainy night but it was clear as day clear as day oh, i mean i don't remember i mean i meant i mean i don't remember i don't know i don't know what it was oh, oh. um but uh it was my mistake to laugh about it and show it to my mom and madison and talk about and it on craig. tv and then send it to the whole cast except for you oh, and craig and little craig oh. <laughs> Chelsea, remember her? Send it to her too. Oh. Chelsea, uh, made sure that I uh, got it into uh, Danny while she was getting her uh, uh, her baby looked at in the uh, the X ray. Yeah, Danny's pregnant. Oh. Oh, showing it to the baby. Did, did an ultrasound. It's just they did an ultrasound and she's pregnant with it's a like, photo. Hey, can you, uh, and can uh, use, uh, beam this through the ultrasound so Danny's baby can see it. <laughs> Hilarious. Hey, remember. Oh, remember that wacky girl from season one that no one remembers with the crazy hair who was dating the old guy who looked like Ross Perot? <laughs> Showed it to her too. Uh, so Shep's like, well, you know what? Taylor's just on an island. I hate that for her. Poor, poor Taylor. It pains me to see Taylor so morally and spiritually lost. I feel responsible. Really? Person who constantly made fun of her religion and said you <laughs> you fucking hate religion and marriage and everything she stands for? I mean, it doesn't make you responsible, but it's funny that you feel like bad that she's so morally lost. Wasn't that your point? Wasn't your point to morally yeah. misguide her, sir? I mean, if we're going to talk about morally lost, how about the fact that Shep is more concerned that he was the last to know about the photo instead of uh, being concerned that people were passing around a photo of this girl behind her back yeah. then when she was new? He was just mad that he was the like, last. I think that's he more the issue. The photo, you know. I'm always the last to know. I'm like Delamitri. I'm always the last to know. Gosh. Um. So, so let's see. Yeah. So. They're yeah, gonna, he's like, I just heard her, and I have best. all this guilt, and I can't wait to go out of town for for guys, boy, for guys' night. And Whitney's like, Yeah, I wish I could come to what's the poor place? What what's the what's the Linville, less wealthy Linville. place uh, oh. that you're going to? <laughs> Lynn Manuel Mirandaville. Oh. Lindaville. And Shep's like, yeah, Linda. we're going to cook steaks. Hopefully, if somebody knows how to light the gas grill, some slur, stupid slutty mom couldn't help me. And then I'll drink some steaks, <laughs> have some fine wines, you know. And I know JT's a lot for you to deal with, but, I mean, he thinks he's cool. Yeah, and he also thinks he's amusing, which is hilarious. So <laughs> He didn't get the photo. <laughs> I didn't show him the photo. <laughs> So um, now we go over to Taylor's house and uh, I do feel bad for Taylor because this is her home life is getting sadder and sadder. It's just her and her like in her apartment assembling little table tents for for day chaser. And like Penelope is there recently, recently, uh, un, recently what fixed. Is that the word? Is that the word? What, or is that archaic? We do that to a dog. Right. Take like, out the what was parts. It broken in the first place. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, dog is, <laughs> like, I don't mean to offend the lady dogs. People are like, you can't call a dog you. fix. I don't know. <laughs> My dog is. You she, just get a lot of. <laughs> like when there's a paw trying to type. <laughs> I'm like, 
I'm like, I'm trying to keep, it's like when you talk, when you talk about Southern charm, I always feel like I'm about to step into like a, just say something totally wrong. Everyone's like, we don't say those words anymore. We don't say dogs are fixed, <laughs> but uh, she was fixed. Um, yeah. So she's in a little diaper thing. I just, Taylor's just the kind of person who puts together table tents. I mean, it's so stupid. Really? All you do is open the plastic slot, shove the paper in and put it on the table. Why are you spending an extra hour before you have to do something to like, just sit there and it's just, that's this taylor you know i, I feel like in this scene She's explains taylor table tents table tents i didn't know that was even what that's what they were called but of course of course she's making table tents at home so uh penelope's watching sad and penelope's like wow i just had my lady parts taken out and i'm the one feeling bad for you right now wow and she's wearing so, a hat that says uh, boozy okay so her mom calls or she calls her mom <laughs> leslie um who is being played by leslie. diane ladd am i right so that's some Diane Ladd action. Yes. That was definitely some Diane Ladd. It was good. Diane Ladd, let's not forget a uh, Facebook suggestion friend for me. Let's never forget. And Facebook was like, someone you might know, Diane Ladd. I was like, thank you. It's about time the, the algorithm was taken over by gay men. I was like, I'm just waiting for someone you might know, Diane Weist. <laughs> just all the Diane. Waiting for that. Any classic <laughs> Diane. <laughs> any diane diane sawyer you might know mm. diane sawyer you know diane sawyer's facebook photo is her like doing the thing with the doing the finger tent speaking of tents on her chin like i'm diane sawyer <laughs> this is sawyer tent here's my photo mm. so diane ladd is her mom and she's like how you doing honey and you know that she's talked to her all the time because you could just see her like sad diane land diane ladd face um suggested friend diane yeah. lane just thought of one for you so um diane lane would be taylor's great. like mom i think i just want to come home she's like but you're getting so good at taylor uh, table tents honey look at you go i mean that was the fastest <laughs> you ever did one what was that three minutes good for you good for you do another one and so then leslie sees um uh, Penelope in her diaper and Leslie goes oh a diaper I thought that was a chastity belt I mean you wouldn't know what that is slutty little daughter <laughs> I'm just kidding come back to the lake right? <laughs> and so Taylor's like oh yeah wow. she's like I actually Thanks. do know what that is mother she's like yeah it was uh, sarcasm you fucking idiot so she's like when <laughs> when things are bad I like to be with my family at the lake house and she's like I mean it feels like everyone's against me mom have I made mistakes recently sure she's like we've all made mistakes honey I took off my chastity belt sorry was that too soon come yeah. up and relax <laughs> just come up and relax <laughs> honey we've all screwed up but we've screwed up we all have done it look even I sent a nude to Whitney once. It just happens. I don't understand it, but we all somehow do these things to Whitney. <laughs> Listen, we all make mistakes, but at least you're not dating JT. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So uh, <laughs> she's like, you know what you should do? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> No, the little guy, little one, with the event space and a mommy. <laughs> hmm, not familiar. The emotional. Ma maybe, uh, maybe you're mistaken. The figurative mom. chastity belt. Oh, JT, right, right, oh. right, JT. Right, 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 right. The person you hang around you if you don't want people to have sex with you. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So she's like, you know what you should do? Invite Olivia because the lake house is a place for healing. And also there's a lot of leaves to cover your body parts like Adam and Eve. So if you do take a picture of yourself, it won't be nude this time. Come home, honey. <sighs> this lake house they're really into this lake house i mean the lake house is nice we see it it's nice but they talk about it like it's it's like cult like they're like oh the lake house i remember the lake house my grandparents live around the corner from the lake house my aunts and uncles live near the lake house there's a fish in the lake and that's near the lake house god i love the lake house it's like we get it it's a house in the this lake is, this is a, an episode where people go to their family homes this is a very privileged episode privilege heavy episode is that <laughs> they're like wow yeah. now let's do this other thing that i never earned um so the guys pack to go on their guys trip or whatever and rod is a straight guy you know so he's 
well, a guy, I guess we've all done this, packing straight out of the dryer uh, and uh, counting underwear by the mm-hmm. day yep. and then packing one extra. And he yep. says, just in case you shit yep. yourself and takes that, that extra pair. <laughs> well, Craig is cooking the food, so you never know when there might be some leakage. <laughs> so then uh, then JT is like, hey, Shep, hey, it's JT. Yeah, um, do, do I need a bathing suit? Like, what do I pack? What do I do? I've never been to a rich person's home before. Shep's like, oh, gosh, just wear something warm. It's going to be cold. And if, if we decide to go swimming, we'll, we'll just wrap you up in toilet paper and dip you in. Gosh, 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 gosh. So the guys gather to do this bus trip at Shep's house to this place. And um, they have to be on the, the bus for five fucking hours. Who gets a cabin five hours away? That's a lot, right? it's it's a lot well it's not a cabin it's a it's a house it's a mountain house so you know you got to follow the money on these shows so that's what they're Mm -hmm. doing so they're all getting on to the uh bus austin gets on and goes all aboard the bang bus baby (laughs) quite literally it's insane right now so he's like wow five hours huh well you know it's it's really uh not normal to be confined on a space with someone who's trying to date your ex. You know, I'm trying to strap, you know, you're going to have to strap me to the roof of this bus. <laughs> I'm sure all the other cars on the highway would like that. They'll have their wipers on while it's fully sunny. So it's just awesome. It's like a snow machine. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> it's starting early this year. I know. Drive Austin to California. Fix the drought. <laughs> Actually, I don't think we're in a drought anymore. So Craig shows up. Hi. And then JT shows up and uh, JT's getting out of his Uber. They're watching him and someone's like, oh, the last piece of the puzzle arrived. And then someone else goes, the smallest piece of the puzzle. Oh, <laughs> JT is this is so JT. So he gets out of his car and he's trying to look cool for the guys. And then the car just takes off with the suitcases and everything. So he's like, hey, I own an event space. And they're cracking up. And it's- Shep goes. <laughs> Wow, this that guy really does get the short end of the stick. Shut, no pun intended. I mean, the guy is the short end of the stick. I'll say that. He is literally doing the end of the what's happening opening credits with rerun chasing after the after the pickup truck. He's like, wait, wait for my bags. Hmm. So JT, uh, by the way, one of my favorite um, instrumental sitcom theme songs. What's happening? You know it. But, 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 it goes but, like this. No, no, it goes like this. It goes. That's what's happening. Yeah, that's so good. Which one was that? I suck at my themes. Do, do yours again? No, I'm, I just suck at it. It's What's, terrible. I'm not doing it. I'm insecure. Thanks a lot for doing this to me today. What was the one you were doing? I, you were doing something, but I wasn't... Was was it... What's that one? I don't know. I don't know what... I know that I know that theme song, but I can't place it. I, it's a famous one, too, which is... Um, okay. Well, I failed that one. So, the guys... <laughs> All right. Let's talk about what's yeah, happening. Yeah, the guys are packing, going on... The, I mean, they're packed. They're, go, they're meeting. They're making short jokes. And then um, now... <laughs> Chef is telling us all the small talk of why he loves his lake house. And then they're talking about how they're going to go fly fishing. And JT's dressed like a fisherman, but he's like, I've never been fly fishing. And Craig's like, it's not just like regular fishing. It's like fishing that you have to make an effort. (laughs) Paige is somewhere like at Dean and DeLuca in New York City. She goes, oh, my God, I just got a shiver. I just got this psychic sense that Craig is talking about fly fishing somewhere in a confined space. Ugh. does anybody have mouthwash i just threw up in my mouth a little bit um it's just i just have this psychic sense about when craig's saying something stupid (laughs) sorry it's it's weird what's the opposite of shining it's the dulling sorry (laughs) so i've got the dulling (laughs) <laughs> but he's just like here's knocking. Craig all work <laughs> all work and no play makes Craig um, got a little tired because he was working all day but like the thing is that like you know you gotta work but like honestly you need to have time for your friends because you don't have time for your friends it's like it's just gonna be like really bad and like I got a new house and stuff but like it's cool and I love Paige mm. 
So Shep <laughs> is, uh, wow, you dress like you fish, JT. How does it feel to live a lie? <laughs> oh, also, we got uh, some comments reminding you, Ben, because last week, I'm saying you, because they blamed what both of us, but this was you. But who what did was I do? Saying, you know that Taylor and Shep are never going to work out because she drives a Ford. And people were like, what is he talking about? What are they talking about? Which I took offense to. And. Did I Ford because frame her? she does drive a Ford, but so did Shep. And Shep has a Ford, and he also drives a Buick, which they apparently isn't. He that. does have a Buick. He always, he's always driving that Buick. Apparently, wait. So wait, but what? Isn't Buick oh, so fancy? Saying, I've always oh. thought Buick was fancy. I don't know. Well, Buick is. Tr- I always felt like Buick gave him a free Buick, and he because like there was a period of time where Buick was trying hard. I saw the redhead so from Grey's Anatomy one answers. time. I used to see her in L.A. out, and she was always driving her Cadillac because you know she used to do those Cadillac commercials and like Matthew McConaughey. Oh yeah, look at me, I got a Cadillac. God, I wish Matthew McConaughey was in a Bravo show because I heard him on a podcast. I just want to talk about him because he talks like that. You know what I like writing children's books. You know what him holler doom dollar. I'm like, who who's Papa are you, <laughs> Matthew? You haven't. An- <laughs> you have an open invitation to watch what crap and Matthew McConaughey. Um, by the way, Buick, get it together. Like, well, how are you? How is, how is your brand so old and you're still such a meh car? I'm sorry. Get it together. Are they meh? I don't really know a lot about them. I, th- I think they're meh. We used to have a Buick. We used to have a big green Buick with a paisley interior. My jiddy, my okay. grandfather used to have a Cadillac and that was like, Everyone thought he was like Daddy War- Jiddy Warbucks over there. We're like, oh yeah, Jiddy has a but Cadillac. Cadillac's I mean, it was a- from like 1960 or whatever, but still, we're like, wow. But Cadillac got it together. They got the Escalade. They like found a way. Like a lot of these cars can find a way, but I feel like Buick is always trying to find a way, and they just haven't broken through. Like someone needs to fix Buick. Like make Buick happen because I'm sort of, I'm sick of it. I'm you sick had of it with Buick. <laughs> I'm sick of this Buick. What you, what'd you had say? it with Buick. You're just done. I have had it with Buick. So so I guess the theory is, (laughs) so my theory is, was that they're not going to work out because Taylor's driving a Ford and that's not fancy enough for Shep. But the thing is that I think Shep is driving a Ford because it was probably given to him by Ford, whereas Taylor's driving a Ford because she's driving a Ford. Hmm. So I still think my theory still stands. Just has more elaboration. <laughs> um, so, just wanted to get that. I just wanted to car shame you because I don't really know the difference between those cars. I really know. Although I do like the new Ford Mustang. I think that's real cute. But then I looked it up and uh, it's all electric. It's like a crossover version, but not, it's, I don't know if it's a Mustang. But it's a Ford. Uh-uh. Some it's a Mustang, right? It has the horse on it, but it's like a crossover looking car. It doesn't look like a Mustang, but it's real cute. And I looked it up, and it was like, all electric, all a new electric. And I was like, what about when the world ends and you really need to drive? You can't, I don't, can't, I don't have a hybrid, but not, not, why are we talking about this? Fishing. We're talking about fly fishing. Fishing. All I've got is, well, by the way, Ford also fixed, Ford, the Ford Bronco, very popular. They Love fixed that it. I hate, I hate a Mustang, but Mustangs are popular. You know, Buick, just find, find a way in. Find a way in, yeah. Buick. So Craig, uh, yeah, so uh, Craig is talking about, oh, Craig's getting into a tizzy because it's Valentine's Day and he's ordered some flowers for Paige, but they haven't arrived on time and he's losing his mind as he's tracking it and trying to like call 1-800-Flowers <laughs> and he's like, I mean, I paid extra to have my Valentine's Day card and flowers to be delivered this morning and they're still not there. What do you want to bet Paige is in New York going, oh, Jesus Christ, if he sends me fucking flowers again. Least creative gift to send She's somebody. Like, we can't wait for the flowers. She's just gonna not answer the door. <laughs> she yeah. She's like on the phone. She's like, hey Hannah, there is a flower man on the other side of my front door, and he has begonias. Disgusting. I will not take these flowers. I'm not gonna take them. I will not. I will not accept the delivery. A loser. So um, let's see. What are we talking about? Fishing. There's a lot of like small talk in this episode. More than flowers, us. Buicks. Probably, probably is about as flowers much as us in this episode. So we go from flowers, and then um, they start talking relationship status, and what is everybody's relationship status? And Rodrigo's like tied down because Rodrigo's there too, you know, which we didn't mention. And then Rod's like, uh, I'm openly dating. And I just brought an extra pair of underwear in case I ship myself, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> and also goes single. 
like my therapist, Dr. Dr. Reality.net, he said, I shouldn't sleep with anyone for the next two months. And Craig's like, yeah, you shouldn't because you don't know how to be alone. Don't be mean, Craig. Um, well, that's like, hey, you know what? Like that could be the uh, the start of a great rom-com. Like you meet a great guy, but you're like, I can't, a great girl, but you're like, I can't, I can't because it's two months. You know what I'm saying? It's like so funny. It's like a really good You movie. can't do it for like two months, but then like you date her and she leaves looking like she's just walked through a car wash anyway. That's so romantic. <laughs> I will return. I will find you, love you, marry you, and live without shame. <laughs> Atonement, 2007. Sorry, just text that to Olivia. So Taylor drives and calls Shep uh, on Valentine's, which, you know, don't do that. <laughs> but Shep, please don't call Shep on Valentine's, okay? So Shep's like, yeah. hey, Taylor, whoa, Taylor, wow, happy Valentine's, Taylor. And she's like, I'm surprised you remembered. Were you going to ask me to be your Valentine? He's like, no, because Valentine's Day is for weak people and losers like my mother. But <laughs> me and the boys are going to make some val- some hamburgers in the shape of hearts later. <laughs> wow, you sound salty. Yeah, well, almost as salty as when I found out that I didn't get to see your nude photo. So, Karsh, how are you? And she's like, good. I'm going to Asheville tonight and I'm going to spend some time with mom and dad at the lake. He's like, oh, cool. And I hope Olivia comes to the lake. I have a lake house. He's like, yeah, oh, but the girls should come. We've got so much testosterone. Wouldn't it be fun if the girls came, guys? I'm like, yeah, we'd love to see you. Happy Valentine's Day. And JT's like, happy Valentine's Day, Taylor. Love you. <laughs> love of my love. Love of my life. I'm going to say to you, would you be mine? She's like, voicemail. Who? Wait, did you just <laughs> vocally send me the voicemail? Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Hi. Hi, you've reached Taylor. I'm not here right now, so please, you know what to do. Leave a message after the beep, beep. <clears throat> Taylor, you're talking on the phone. I've heard your whole conversation. So the girls consider coming. They're going to consider coming. So then later, we start doing this, like, land two hours later, and JT is, like, throwing up a bottle of wild turkey like he's in cocktail, but then dropping it on the ground. And I was like, you know what? You're not <laughs> only... A shame to cool people. You're ashamed to short people because Tom Cruise really had that perfected. Okay, you can't do that Tom to Cruise. a short hero. She is our short Meshuggah King, and you know what? He showed that. You know, he shows you can do it. He shows you can do it. Um, okay, so uh, then it's three hours, and now everyone's napping. And then now it's two hours to go, and Craig is back on the phone. He's like, why is there a signature required for flowers, you fuck? <laughs> He's losing his mind over the flowers. And then one hour to go, hey, do you guys think panda bears are real? <laughs> like, I really want them to be real. Panda bears are real, dude. And he's oh, really? You believe that? Joke's on you. <laughs> And Craig, Chef's like, Craig has all those conspiracies. I really think that guy's got a screw loose. And then we see a clip of him talking about how he won't take the flu vaccine because uh, it makes you walk backwards. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So Rodrigo goes, so you don't think that panda bears are real? He goes, like, because there's no evidence of it. Pandas definitely aren't real. They're just like people in panda suits. <laughs> So then we go to Taylor's Lake House. It's gorgeous. I mean, the house itself. I mean, huge. It's, it's huge, and it's it is right on the lake. It's so pretty. So she goes home, it's so and this pretty. family really loves their literal sign. You know, their sign art, and it's their like home people. is where memories are made. Slut, keep your clothes on. I was like, whoa, God, the mom really <laughs> got that that sign made quickly. Home is where memories are made, not nude photos. So, Taylor, keep a lid on it. It's like, wow, they sell that at Marshall's? It's like, welcome so, home. We've put a nanny cam in your bedroom. Keep your clothes on. Like, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, Taylor's there, and her mom Leslie, and then her dad Rick. Rick walks in, and Taylor's like, Taylor starts waxing poetic again about she's like the mount, the lake house. It's on a mountain. It's like a mountain oasis. And when I'm at the lake, it's like you're in the mountains, but you're at a lake, and it's an oasis. And he was, I'm like, okay, this is either going to be the scene of a horror movie or a very boring movie on Great American Country. Well, I'll tell you what it turned into. A very sweet but very boring family scene. They all just kind of stand yeah. in a circle. The brother comes over um, with his girlfriend, Worth, Worth and then uh, the grandparents Worth. come over, and Worth, um, I believe, passes away later in the season. So, I want. Does he really? Yeah, you didn't know that. I she had no idea. Her brother as well later in the season no yes way oh my god i'm glad you told me that so i didn't make fun of him yeah oh, that's shocking. i know that's why i'm like okay fast i know about forward. olivia's brother yeah olivia's brother and then taylor loses her brother later in the season i think there was something going on in oh, yeah, Charleston wow. or something. I don't know, but nothing a lot of tragedy this season Jesus. on this show so he passes so i don't really want to mock them too much but they have a whole family scene and they're like very nice and i'm not sure why this scene is so long <laughs> but they seem like very nice people and the grandparents are talking okay. about how they've been married almost 70 years and and the grandma's like oh yeah and it takes 65 for them to finally start doing what you're telling them to do <laughs> and imagine it took us 67 years of being married before we had to see a new photo of our granddaughter in our inboxes thanks a lot for that so they're like so did they do they still use the term courting grandparents and uh taylor's like no now we say talking and then we're dating and her brother's like yeah now it's dtr you gotta define the relationship it's like uh DT, DTR, DTF, um, DT. Yeah, we still say courting, but it's like more like when I'm sick of your ass, I'm taking you to fucking court and taking half of what you have because I don't have to put up with your shit for 70 years. Okay? This is 2023. Court. Yeah. Also, Courtin is the name of a new cast member on next season of Southern Charm. Let's be honest. Please welcome Courtin. <laughs> So, uh, meanwhile, uh, the guys have arrived at Shep's family home, and JT's like, wow, this is amazing. Look at these tall ceilings. Uh, they're normal height. Sorry. And um, there's, like, lots of... <laughs> what are those, vaulted? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a crawl space. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a really long time of just small talk and Shep kind of pointing people towards their room and stuff. And then Shep tells a story about yeah. his family cabin and now there's golfing and fishing and all the stuff that makes me happy. I even occasionally emotionally abuse the animals that surround the property. <laughs> just, there's just nothing happy like this place. And they're just like all, they're all getting situated. And this struck me as funny. At one point, Craig walks through this gorgeous house, like this gorgeous cabin. We all know what it smells like in there. It's sort of smoky and just like fall and just wealthy. And Craig goes, I love this place. Like, I really do love this place. Like, oh, oh, uh, for a moment, I wasn't sure you would love this opulent, beautiful house that you could never afford. Really? What a shock. But he still does kind of diss it later because he gets his room and he goes, wow, what a lovely view of the driveway. So then um, <laughs> later, Rod and JT have privacy in their room. JT brings him a white claw. And um, Rod's like, you know what? It's time to talk some shit. Shut the door. Austin is proving he deserves no benefit of the doubt here. I'm pretty sure something happened with Olivia. That girl that you're not dating? Listen, you can buy some gluten bread, some gluten free bread for somebody, but you are not dating that person, sir. Sorry, you're not dating. Like, listen. I, I actually, you know, I like Rod, I mean, Rod and um, Olivia together, but the moment he said he doesn't eat salads, you're just not going to have a future with a skinny white girl. <laughs> Like, if you say you don't like salads to a skinny white girl, it's like you might as well just say, I want to run you over. We're with my car. never going to sweet greens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> it's honestly, that is what. She's like, well, I want to go on a date to sweet greens, but. We're just a general so, grocery so, shopping, you know? It's like totally different aisles. <laughs> you really need to date somebody that you like walking down the same aisles at the grocery store. <laughs> I know. So um so then meanwhile downstairs 
so while he's talking about that, while Rod is saying that there's an issue, something happened. Um, one thing that's going on is that they're going to be making in honor of Valentine's Day uh, burger patties in the shape of hearts. So um, Rodrigo and Shep are making it, and Rodrigo's taken all the meat, all the ground meat, and he's made like one giant heart. I think as like a joke or something. And of course, Austin goes, "You need to make that into six different patties." <laughs> Rodrigo just goes, "No shit." <laughs> <laughs> like you fucking idiot you think we're gonna make one giant burger that we're gonna cut up yeah. so then we go to um austin and craig having some private time okay so now we've got jt and what's his face rod talking and then we've got craig and austin talking two different parts of the house mm-hmm. and so austin's like oh, i had a day with olivia and that was really nice i thought that was really good we watched ace ventura six times so that was that was great and craig's like wait was it just you two see that's inappropriate because that was your ex and you like can't hang out with your ex and expect things to go right <laughs> craig craig this is Sparta. Come on, Craig. It's 300. And I know, Gerard, I know, he, I know that uh, Rod thinks that something happened with me and Olivia. I can just tell. And so we cut back to Rod, and Rod's like, yeah, so I went out with a girlfriend of mine, a good girlfriend of mine, and Austin's been uh, flirty with her for over the last uh, few months and stuff, and uh, she tells me this, uh, this is like super random, but like Austin lives around the corner, so she went over there, and uh, then uh, when, the, you know, the next day she saw a bra on the ottoman so it's like wow this town is so gossipy so you had a friend who hooked yes. up with austin and then tattletailed about him possibly hooking up with somebody else mm-hmm. i love this town and we by the way we already know that austin is guilty because he's trying to get ahead of the story because like the whole thing where he pulls craig aside to be like i think that rod thinks something's going on like that is the telltale sign of someone trying to already like do some damage control yes. already so jt's like he's like what did did the girl say whose bra it was i hope it wasn't my sweet angel taylor and did it rod have goes, hearts on uh, the straps that might have been mommies just please tell me it's not mommies <laughs> please <laughs> rod's like yeah well he had olivia over so assuming it's and JT's hurts. like, so then Craig, <gasps> he turns his head and does a big sigh. So mad. <laughs> Not a bra on the ottoman. So then Craig says, he's like, so you and Olivia had a hangout? And I was like, yeah. Well, we quite literally met in the morning for like a hangout. And then like we went to lunch and then she was like, I just want to watch a movie at your house. Like quite literally. And like, cause like that's what we used to do. We like sit and watch a movie and then like we used to do it so often. And like, so she was like going to be on one side of the couch. I was gonna be on another. And like, I was like, fine, it totally works. So we watched three quarters of her favorite rom-com, like an Ashton Kutcher movie. Like my fucking guy, Ashton Kutcher. Love, love the people he stands for. Love the people he writes uh, testimonies for. Great guy. Great, great character witness. Love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> um, okay, but he also tells on himself the whole time. Like, he wants to be caught in yeah. his lies, which is so funny. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, so we just watched the movie. We got three quarters of the way through it. Oh, really? Well, what happened in the last quarter, Austin? You know? Exactly. Why did you stop watching you it? So he's like, wait a minute. Is this friend with benefits? And he goes, no, 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 guess who left her bra? on like my little whatever that thing is that goes in your eyes. A little poof. A little poof thing. I think Craig's like, a panda bear. No, Craig. Olivia. <laughs> yes, Craig. In a panda suit. This is Olivia in a panda suit. <laughs> Olivia's not real. <laughs> so then <laughs> Austin's like, yes. But the thing is this, Austin just says it like, oh yeah. You know how like, oh, I left my uh I left my my phone charger at your place. So, yeah, she just left her bra on my poof. I'm like, but Yeah, we all know how it goes. What? what? That she just whipped left her bra off. I've literally I am a gay man, okay? I have many female friends, and literally none of them have ever just taken off their bra and just left it somewhere in my house, just because. I mean... Okay? So let alone, like, a a uh, like a horny, straight guy's house, like Austin's, and it's just like, oh, yeah, just watching a movie. Took I off my will bra and say, with, uh, uh, as a person with nieces and a sister who are over here all the time, I have found bras... In the couch, where I'm like, "What is your bra doing here?" And they're like, "I just took my bra off. We were watching." Like, I do. I have heard of that. Like, we're we're just watching a movie, and they just get comfortable, you know. Um, but it's Aust- It's Olivia being at Austin's house, so there's like a history that I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they. I don't they think bump. she wouldn't. Bump, Olivia right? would not. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Olivia's taking off her bra 
in front of Austin when they have this like weird situation of like maybe, maybe not, you know, like I just don't see it. I don't see her doing that. I, I could see her thinking this is going to lead him on or something like that. I don't want to deal with Austin thinking something and going and telling people, you know, like, so I think something happened for sure. Okay. So, um, JT and it was wet, <sighs> whatever it was, there was very misguided tongues because they both have the same and here's why i believe that they belong together i've said this before on these recaps i believe they belong together because they have similar mouth issues and they both eat the same way they both mm. smack while they eat and don't close their mouths so I'm, i think that they're going to get married just calling it yeah um it, it could happen a real a r- real tongue tongue relationship so um basically jt's like this is this is not okay behavior this has got to stop i need to see poppy seed i'm sorry i was talking about my mom not facetiming me yet today what were we talking about rod and rod's like i'm just so frustrated in so many ways bro like i went to austin like a gentleman and i told him like a man i was interested in a man i mean i am a man and i'm interested and i want to pursue her i'm just saying man so many times i can't stop saying man all the time i'm a man man that's what real men so. do is tell their friend that they want to date their ex so i can't believe that he's trying to date his ex when i told him i wanted to date his ex so which reminds me i need to see the latest x man man i watch that man three quarters man. of it and then i fuck well nothing i didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's not. Don't even know a movie oh. quote from it. Quite Jim literally. Carrey X-Men that. quite literally. Jim Carrey that. I don't even know. He could have ended it. So <laughs> been at the end of it. Rod's like, listen, I don't have you know, I didn't have to ask permission from from Austin, but I did it, you know. I'm like, a man. And now That's I'm watching him do. Fun. I'm a man. Man to man. Man to man. And man to tongue. <laughs> And uh, now I'm watching Austin fuck with her feelings. So then Craig, back to Craig and Austin. Craig's like, did you look up? And Austin literally starts pulling at his ears. He's like, uh. uh, Look, what are you, uh, Carol Burnett? uh, What are you fucking pulling your ears? You are the most (laughs) obvious person. (laughs) T, get that get that curtain rod out of your out of your blazer. He's like, no, no, Craig. So, the lies. So Craig's like, um, I think he's crossing a line, but you know that's Austin. He's an idiot. He's like, if we would have hooked up, Craig, I would have told you just like I told you about Taylor. Oh, I guess I did not tell you about Taylor, but theoretically. If I were pressed several months later, I would have sworn Olivia to secrecy, and then I would have come out with it and made her look bad. That's how I would have done it, Craig. Like, obviously, quite literally. I'm growing. So then JT and Rod get all worked up, and Rod's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait until he looks at me in the slightest wrong, and then I'm going to go at him. I think, okay. So uh, the guys start gathering again downstairs, and Shep is just like, What's a strainer? I hate how that dumb bitch says things up. I'm going to call her right now. Listen here, slut whore. I'll figure out where to put the strainers, idiot. <laughs> Shep, stop talking to your mom that way. <sighs> So then, um, uh, so Craig and uh, yeah, Craig and uh, now Craig's like making the burgers. Yeah, Shep rummaging through the drawers, and then now this is where Shep finds the Velveeta and it's like squeezing it into like some shells. It's like, oh gosh, I'm in my happy place. Velveeta shells and cheese. Throw them at Craig, but first throw them at JT. Oh JT, guess where you're sleeping tonight? In a shell, cause that's where you fit a little pasta shell. <laughs> oh, the taunting it takes so many forms. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of gross. And then, um, JT is, they're making like jokes about the burgers and stuff like that. And so they're like, I thought these were going to be hearts. And Chip's like, no, we broke the hearts. And JT's like, yeah, well, I'm shocked you broke hearts together. And Austin goes, well, someone's got to do it, little, little guy. And JT goes, well, you are a pro at breaking hearts. And Austin just does this like, huh. <laughs> And JT's like, I'm getting really upset because I can't keep watching Austin get away with murder. He's betrayed Shep. He's betrayed Rod. And now he thinks he can just walk on water. Like, well, I guess 
I guess it's technically because he's spitting everywhere, so he is kind of like walking on water. But he thinks he can walk on water, and it's nice. And he can't because we see everything, and we hear, well, I got to get on a box, and then I see everything, and we hear everything, and he's hurting people. Yeah. So they kind of make small talk, but also like trade little barbs here and there, and they're they're trying, you know? It's like their first like big try, try at a group fight. So then it's time yeah. that the music changes like three times because nothing is going on on this. You wouldn't know it. It's an hour and 11 minutes into this recap. But but yeah. they're but they're trying to make it happen by changing the music a lot. It's like mm-hmm. while they're just lighting candles and stuff. So then, um, but they finally they finally find a way into the fight by talking about sriracha sauce, which is really impressive because um, one of them puts sriracha sauce into their burger, and then Austin's like, apparently that town is in fucking ruins, and Rod's like, yeah, because the sriracha, all the chilies get into the air, and then JT's like. They kind of created a toxic situation, kind of like our town with you motherfuckers, mm. sriracha motherfucker fools. So then Austin is uh, mad because he knows that they're talking about him, but he's also doing the eating while he's pushing food out of his mouth against his teeth with his tongue, and it's extremely difficult to watch. Okay, It's hard for me to even yeah. know what happened in the rest of this episode because I'm furious. Yeah, so by the way, this is this is sucky of JT because Rod had said how he's gonna handle Austin, but then JT forces the issue yes. and now you know that's like not it's not cool. You're like being a bad sidekick right now. So Austin's like he's like, Why is JT always adding his own two cents? It's like a mosquito in my ear. And so then they so try JT's to ignore like, him. Austin's like, Okay, well, uh I can make Austin, uh breakfast tomorrow. Um uh, uh, hold on, let me get, let me let me just digest this egg with my teeth and my tongue. Okay. Unless uh <laughs> someone else wants to but me and craig usually do it and, and uh jt's like well i'm actually quite the chef and tonight i'm the sous chef because i'm gonna pass the stirring of this pot to my good friend the other new person on this cast rod you're up go hit it pearl i guess i guess I guess my sriracha thing wasn't good enough to start the fight, so let me do some chef metaphor and with the stirring the pot. Rod, go I for mean, it. Dude, so like, have some chill. This is like it's like signing someone else for karaoke. You can't do that. <laughs> I know. So Rod's like, wow, um, I was going to enjoy my mac and cheese and sriracha and no salad. <laughs> Stupid salad. But uh anyway, I told JT some things I want to talk about tonight, and that's what he's talking about, so Let's talk about it. So, so then I was like, okay. It's like, I'm going to be blunt. Emily Blunt. God, she's a great actress. Do you have any quotes from her, uh, No, but what I've are you talking that. about, Rob? Me and Olivia have watched about three quarters of her films before, before we've uh, <laughs> talked about stuff. So, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I heard that Olivia and you hung out on Thursday and, uh, and you know, and I was she came over a girlfriend so of mine. Which point? What's your point? She came over. So, what? well, she told so, me there was a bra. Told me there was a bra on the ottoman. She called that the girl that is not. And Austin just covers his face. As, He's like, oh Jesus Christ! And she goes, whose bra? bra? Was it Taylor's? Did anyone get a picture? You better send it to me first. <laughs> it was mine, everyone. It was my bra. I'm not afraid to. Shake a shake a tail feather here and there with the young men Patricia. on this cast. <laughs> Patricia just pops out of out of nowhere. So Craig's <laughs> like, um, yeah, Olivia got comfy and took her bra off. So what's the big deal? And JT goes, get comfy. You take your shoes off to get comfortable. You take your bra off when you're in love with your mother, and it's summertime, and she's only got a moo moo, and the air conditioner is just a window unit, and you're just a boy. <laughs> Wait, goes, nothing happened. That was a terrible image, JT. Sorry. Nothing Sorry happened. Sorry to be fair, I did stop myself in that one because I really felt like it was going to a terrible place. Sometimes your mama's in a moo moo and she's overheated and the swafts of, of, of chili peppers from the sriracha factory nearby are making her sneeze, so she got to take off a ball. Listen, broth. sometimes Oedipal, Oedipal references go a little too far, okay? What can I say? Uh, I, I make <laughs> Oedipal references like I pick couches. Poorly. Poorly. <laughs> so Austin is like, 
Guys, nothing happened. I mean, we cuddled a little bit, and she gave me a big old hug, and she kissed me on the chest, and then she fucking left. I was like, you cuddled a little See, bit? See, but that's Austin, too. There that's- is Austin. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing happened. She was, When she said goodbye, she hugged me, and then she just kissed me on the chest and suddenly left. Like, what? You cuddled, and she kissed you the on cuddles. the chest. Like, he's just leading. It's not that no one can do that. It's mm-hmm. just that he's leading on purpose. This guy's such an ass. Yeah. Cuddling with your ex, cackling hags, like that's like something happened. So Craig is like, I think that you guys should go talk in private because honestly, I'm trying to get through to 1-800-Flowers and you're really distracting me. So they go off and then JT's sitting there in his chair. He's all upset. He's like, I've had enough, dude. I've had enough of him getting away with murder in this friend group. Okay. It's ridiculous. Craig's like, but Olivia's just as guilty as Austin because women aren't helpless sex creatures. They're the bane of our society. Haven't you watched our show? That's what it's about. And uh, JT's like, you don't stand him up and hold him accountable, Craig. You don't hold him a crown accountable. And Shep's like, you know what? You're causing a disturbance in the force here, okay? And Shep tells us, he can't see Austin won't be held accountable ever. That's Austin. It's never going to happen. That's a great way to hold someone accountable by saying, "Well, it's never gonna. He'll never hold himself accountable." So why well, that's bother? how they all work with each other. You know, they're just like, "Hey, yeah. you don't." Their deal well, is like, the- "You don't hold me accountable. I don't hold you accountable." That's why when they do hold each other accountable, it's the most defensive thing ever. It's like, "How dare you?" Like last season when they were trying to be like, "Shep, you're constantly flirting with people at bars when you've got Taylor waiting at home." Like knowing very well he fucking cheats on Taylor all the time, and he's like, "How yeah. dare you say that on camera?" when you're cheating on everybody all the time too you know it's like their deal exactly well it's also like a few weeks ago when when olivia's like this i expected from austin but not from taylor and it's like because it's like oh well it's austin don't need to hold him accountable well i think in that case she just already knew he's a piece of shit because she broke up with him already or like he treated her like shit but taylor he still should be held accountable well she she held him accountable accountable, but he he, he went through the whole thing the whole process where she's already told him i hate you done all that stuff been mean to him on camera and done all that to where he's you know (laughs) groveled his way back around you know taylor has to still go through that whole process so austin and rod go outside and Austin goes, I was severely hoping that you and I were going to be able to talk. <laughs> Guys, severely, he was severely hoping. hoping it. Just wanted to get a, <laughs> I'm severe. Just wanted to get a three syllable in there. Like, okay, it'd make me sound smart. <laughs> severely. So that's, that's, I think, the best use of the word severely. You know, I want to talk with you. How much? I severely want to talk with you. The last okay. person to use so that rest. was um, Taylor's knitting teacher. <laughs> Taylor, do you need to do that so severely? It's like, what? It's supposed to be sunshine. <laughs> Listen, it's clobbering time. Sorry, there's a quote from the Fantastic Four, 2005. So uh, let's severely talk. So Rod goes, well, you know, the last couple of days I let my imagination go. And I was like, you know, like, in what world did they not make out? Like, am I going to have to start eating salad soon? And Austin's like, I have nothing to hide. Nothing to hide whatsoever. And sure, you know, us cuddling and making out and having sex brought back some feelings. But I can answer you. And nothing happened. And then he goes, I can't say why she did it. I can't say why she took off her bra, I guess is what he's saying. So then mm-hmm. Rod's like, it's Rod tells us, I just want him to realize that he's hurting people and he needs to come clean because not coming clean, that's not what a gentleman does. <laughs> and I'm a man. Clean a is not a word man. often to use with these yeah. men. <laughs> Have you seen a meat? So Rod's like, I mean, it's not her life, but it's just not easy for me to see her get with her ex. And so Austin's like, I mean, look, I'm not trying to get her back, but of course, you know, I know that if I do get her back, I'm only going to hurt her again. So please take her. How do you think I feel? How do you think I feel? Watching a girl I kind of dated, we shared some uh, cheesy tots last season and then didn't date. And then we got like upset about a relationship we never had. How do you think it makes me feel to see her with you after all that, after cheesy tots? How do you think so I feel Rod's like, after I blew off a girl, watching her pretend to be somebody interest, interested in somebody because they got her something gluten free and then having to get her to like me again so I can blow her off again? Do you know how difficult that is for me? <laughs> Rod's like, look, I've heard the story and I haven't believed it, but just just tell me the truth. Did you make out? <sighs> Hold on. We oh, absolutely, uh, totally made out. Uh, nope. Like bandits with a great deal from DoorDash that night. That's all. <laughs> 
while we were fucking or <laughs> I don't kiss while I fuck. So no, we did not make out. <laughs> um, so he's like, no, not what happened. And so if you want to be head over heels for someone that dot, 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 I'm not going to stop you. It's like, what was the dot, dot, dot? What does that mean? If you want to fall for somebody that <laughs> totally didn't make out with Shrug. behind your back yeah. oh, while she's pretending to like you. Mm. So Rod goes, I hear it. And I hear your subtone too. Did he say subtone? Yeah. Is that what he yeah, said? I think he meant like I get what, your what subtext. What do you mean by that? Like, because Austin's being obvious. Because he goes, "No, that's not what happened." And if you want to be over head over heels for someone that, I'm not going to stop you. He stops. So he's like, "Okay." Yeah. So like, I see what you're saying. You know, like if you want to be with somebody yeah. that's obviously already been with me and that still has feelings for me, have fun. But that's your choice. You fuck. Mm-hmm. So Craig's like inside. Craig's like. Rod's not Olivia's boyfriend, and Rod has no claim over Olivia. And JT's like, but did you know that he hooked up with Olivia? He didn't hook up with Olivia. They just had sex, and she left his bra at his house afterwards because they were naked together. It's not a hookup. Um, and then Austin, back with Austin, he's like, and you know what? I'm not happy with me, which is why I'm pursuing therapy on .NET. And what's your plan here, Rod? What's your plan? What's your plan? And Rod's like, well, I'm a mature adult, so I'm going to talk to her about it, and I'm going to listen to what she says, and I'm going to drive to three stores and get her three different kinds of gluten-free buns, and then I'm going to see where she wants to go from there. And then Austin's like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's like sipping in the most suspicious way. He's so shady. Yes. Austin. So the question is... Will Rod and Olivia's um, barely simmering relationship be able to survive Olivia's barely simmering relationship <laughs> that she used to have with Austin? I'm what the thing I'm most interested on this show to see because I think Olivia is pretty much here to stay, right? I mean, it seems like Olivia is like the new yeah. the new lead cast. I think I would really love to see Olivia genuinely fall for somebody on this show that it's not forced just to be on this show because her first season it's like I'm yeah. I just moved to Charleston just because I totally want to be here from L.A., which is not true. And then she had that whole fake thing with Austin. Now she's uh, has no chemistry with this guy, Rod. I'm sorry, there's just nothing there. So I want to see somebody that she's like really into. I want that for you. I hope that for you. Next time on Seth and Charm, hopefully Olivia will find somebody to light a fire under that. Light a fire under that girl. Um, so let's see. Let's see what happens. We will see. Well, we got the mid-season trailer after that. So I don't know if there's an episode next week because I feel like the, the tradition lately on Bravo is that after the mid-season trailer, there's a week off. We're going to look into that. So either we'll have more Southern Charm next week or no Southern Charm next week. But either way, we have uh, Beverly Hills is coming up next. <laughs> and Ronnie is off to BravoCon where he will be avoiding all of Austin's spittle. And, um, you know, I can't wait to hear all the stories that you're going to come back with. It's going to be so much fun. Say hi to all of our podcaster friends, all the people we know. Uh, you're just going to have the best time it's ever. It's not too late, Ben. And guess what? Next week is it's a new literally. Southern Charm. It's a new episode. Just looked it up. So there we so go. So we will be back with it that. It is too late. It is too late for me to go. I'm not going. I, I have other I have other plans. I have other obligations. I cannot do it. I you cannot. Can come. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We will talk to you next time. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Saboni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Kristen Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo LaRue. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And 
our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Our Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.